in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to participate worldly in these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God what I have done and what I failed to do through my fault. Of the Blessed Mary, Robert, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son, as he hung upon the cross, chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also. Grant, we pray, that with her loving help, your church may be more fruitful day by day and exalting in the holiness of her children, and may draw to her embrace all the families of the peoples. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent word to Jeroboam, king of Israel, as follows. Amos is plotting against you in the heart of the house of Israel. The country can no longer tolerate what he keeps saying. For this is what he says, Jeroboam is going to die by the sword, and Israel go into exile far from its country. To Amos, Amaziah said, go away, Seir, get back to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there, do your prophesying there. We want no more prophesying in Bethel. This is the royal sanctuary, the national temple. I was no prophet, neither did I belong to any of the brotherhoods of prophets, Amos replied to Amaziah. I was a shepherd and looked after sycamores, but it was the Lord who took me from herding the flock. And the Lord who said, go prophesying to my people Israel. So listen to the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel. Utter no oracles against the house of Isaac. Very well. This is what the Lord says. Your wife will be forced to go onto the streets. Your sons and daughters will fall by the sword. Your land be parceled out by measuring line, and you yourself die on unclean soil, and Israel will go into exile far distant from its own land. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The decrees of the Lord are truth and all of them just. Decrees of the Lord are truth and all of them just. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. The decrees of the Lord are truth and all of them just. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. The decrees of the Lord are truth and all of them just. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth and all of them just. The decrees of the Lord are truth and all of them just. They are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold. And sweeter are they than honey, than honey from the comb. The decrees of the Lord are truth and all of them just. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. 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 Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus got back in the boat, crossed the water, and came to his own town. Then some people appeared, bringing him a paralytic stretched out on a bed. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Courage, my child, your sins are forgiven. And at this, some scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Knowing what was in their minds, Jesus said, Why do you have such wicked thoughts in your hearts? Now, which of these is easier, to say your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin, he said to the paralytic, get up and pick up your bed and go off home. And the man got up and went home. A feeling of awe came over the crowd when they saw this. And they praised God for giving such power to men. The Gospel of the Lord. Be seated. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> we don't know the response. Uh, when it is said, glory to Jesus, you respond, or not to Mary. Glory to Jesus. Um, I would like us to take our reflection this afternoon from the gospel reading. The gospel reading of today gives us a clue of one of the sacraments that we have in the church. And that is the sacrament of reconciliation. 
the sacrament of penance. I would like to take the reflection from this angle or from this perspective. The reading tells us that some persons brought a paralytic, someone who is paralyzed to Jesus. And Jesus, seeing their faith, he said to the man that was paralyzed, instead of healing him first, he first of all forgave him his sin. He says, my son, your sins are forgiven. And the scribes and the Pharisees, who were always out to see uh, the fault of Jesus or to find something to use as, uh, against Jesus, said, who is this man to forgive sin? And Jesus went on to prove to them that the Son of Man has power to forgive sin. When he told the paralytic, stand up and walk or go home. And so it was. At the end of the reading, there is something that the people said, or what ha something happened. And they said that the crowd, or the people who were around when this miracle happened, they praised God for giving such power to men, not to Jesus. Yes, they didn't say for giving such power to this man. But to men, it means that the power was given to men. The power to forgive sin comes from God. Only God has the power to forgive sin, of which the scribes were right to have said, only God has the power to forgive sin. Jesus is God. And being God, he gave that power to men. First of all, he started with his apostles. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, on their way to Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked them, who do people say the Son of Man is? And it was only Peter who could answer that. He said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. After all that, Jesus told him something. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gate of hell we never prevail against it. He went on to say, whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. That is, giving Peter the power to loose and bind. The power to forgive sin. It was fitter, first of all, that Jesus gave that power. But as time went on, he didn't stop with Peter. He gave it to all of them. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, there he told them, whatever you lose, that is referring to the apostles, all of them, whatever you lose, now not only to Peter, but all of them, whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. That is extending the power to all the apostles. For the sake of doubting Thomas's, who will say, but he's just saying lose and buy. It doesn't refer to sin. In the Gospel of John, chapter 20, after the resurrection, Jesus, when he appeared to them, he, he, the word of God tells us from verse 21, he says, he breathed on them and gave them the Holy Spirit and say, whose sins you forgive. Now it's so clearly stated, not binding and losing again. He didn't use that word, now he used the word sin. Whose ever sins you forgive, they will be forgiven. And whose sins you retain, they will be retained. So the power to forgive sin comes from God. And this power is given to men. Jesus, who is God, gave the power to the apostles. The apostles, they knew they will not be forever. As time went on, they too, they were ordaining people, laying hands. You see, when you read uh, the letter of St. Um, Paul to Timothy, he was telling Timothy about his ordination, saying that, found into flames the gift you receive when the elders and the prophets lay hand on you. 
talking to Timothy about his ordination. That was how the apostles kept on ordaining people and transferring this power to forgive sin and to carry other ministerial functions. So we, in the Catholic Church, we believe that this power comes from God, and God has given it to men. As the, the last sentence says, and they praise God for giving such power to men. So, brothers and sisters, I would like us to believe that which the church is doing. The church does not come out to formulate doctrines because she wants to. She formulates a doctrine because she believes it is being revealed. So we have this teaching and this doctrine of the sacrament of reconciliation. How many of us make use of this sacrament today? How many of us make use of this sacrament today? We are here for pilgrimage because we believe that our mother Mary appeared to the three children of Fatima as children of Mary, are you following the footstep of Mary? If Mary were to be with us physically today, she will always obey the teaching of the church. She will always follow that which the church says. Are you following that which the, the church says? Are you making use of this sacrament for your own salvation? Can you remember the last time you went for the sacrament of reconciliation? Or you have lost the sense of sin? Brothers and sisters, let us try our best to see that we make use of this golden opportunity that God has given to us for our own salvation. May the Lord bless his world in our hearts. Let us arise for the prayer of the faithful. Elijah let his new disciples have all the time he needed before coming to follow him. Not so Jesus, whose mission is greater and reaches out to the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, we come to Mass as a sign that we wish to follow Jesus wherever his love may lead us. We pray to put these wishes first in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, the worst thing that could happen is to be separated from Jesus, our shepherd. Dear Jesus, my Redeemer, friend and brother, never let us be separated from you. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that all nations will cease from tearing one another to pieces. And for our part, we pray for, to be gentle in our lives, in the way we treat one another. Lord, in your mercy. God's ways are not our ways. Jesus, tell us our sins are forgiven, not to make us ourselves indulge, but to make us free, willing to take risk and not afraid of making mistakes. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for vocation to the priesthood and the religious life and to all generous vocations in the service of God. May young people hear the call to do something beautiful for God in their lifetime. Lord, in your mercy. We pray in silence for what we need and to hear what God 
me quietly inviting us to do. Mary, one moment in your young life, you changed everything. So we unite our personal petition and prayers with the prayer of our mother Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. We pray for our world that everyone from the greatest to the least may hear the word of God and keep it through Christ our Lord. We have this one to offer food of the land, and the demands to go for us as a church to make a blessed go for us. Lord, we must be to accept us and refuse for the sacrifice we have brought to him. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Receive our offerings, O Lord, and transform them into the mystery of salvation, so that by its power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and with her may be united more closely to the work of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to proclaim your greatness with due praise as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. Receiving your word in her immaculate heart, she was found worthy to conceive him in her virginal womb. And giving birth to the Creator, she nurtured the beginnings of the church. Standing beside the cross, she received the testament of divine love and took to herself her sons and daughters, all those who by the death of Christ are born to the heavenly life. As the apostles awaited the spirit you had promised, she joined her supplication to the prayers of the disciples and so became the pattern of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she accompanies your pregnant church with a motherless love and watches in kindness over the church's onward steps until the last day shall come in glorious splendor. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and the bishop in charge of this pilgrimage, and all the clergy, Remember us, also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glory for you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lamb of God. My brothers and sisters, look here. This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. This is he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all of us who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Having received the pledge of redemption and of life, we humbly pray, O Lord, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary's motherly help, your church may teach all nations by proclaiming the gospel and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace and love of Christ, for this Mass is ended. <laughs>